Well, I haven't uh, managed to get to the workshop because uh, it's the weekend and uh, essential travel is all that's allowed at the moment. So I thought I'd do something on one of my hobbies, which is reenactment. I'm part of a group called Deeds of Arms and we reenact uh, medieval uh, camp life about 1360 and 1805 life aboard a ship of the line, in particular the HMS Temeraire. Um, around about the time of the Battle of Trafalgar. We thought the Temeraire's story was uh, too good an opportunity to be missed and needed to be told. So uh, we built a gun deck and I'll put a couple of pictures up of that um, so we can show what life was like in and around a gun of a ship of the line. Given that most of us were a bit older uh, than perhaps most of the crew of the HMS Temeraire, we took a look at the men that worked on there and found ones our age. So the chap that I tried to represent a little bit is a, a gentleman called, well, a man called Francis Harris, and he was the warrant officer gunner. So he was in charge of all the munitions and stores and material based around those. And I've gathered lots and bits and pieces together. I've got a few bits here um, that would be typical of a gunner. Uh, so we have entertainment here. Uh, lots of different forms of entertainment, but no gambling allowed. Oh, hello. We have a ship's cat who has just um, decided to uh, join me, who I'll move in a moment. We have education, which you can possibly still just see here. In this case, I'm looking at some geometry and, most importantly, a pipe. Here we go. See what Cooper makes of that, the ship's cat. It's probably a bit too fluffy for a ship's cat, I, a cat, I would reckon. All right, so we'll move him off of here in a moment just when he's uh, ready to go. So, I have a pipe here, and uh, this pipe is more of an American-style pipe, and that's why I thought I'd show it, and that's why I got it, to be honest, because it enables me to talk about uh, the um, metropolitan world that these people existed in. Um, the Americas obviously been well discovered by 1805, and there's trade back and forth, and a few disagreements, which a few of you might remember, and one of those disagreements came about, or, or, or it sort of culminated in the beginnings at the Boston Tea Party. And one of the things that was really annoying um, America amongst all the Americans, amongst or the people who became the Americans, I should say, amongst the many things. Oh, hello, he's had enough. Nope, it's going to sit on my pipe. Let me just get rid of the ship's cat. Hopefully he won't bite me. Oh, there you go. Oh. One of the things that was irritating them was um, that American sailors or colonial sailors were being pressed so they were being taken from their ships and put onto British naval vessels. It was a practice of the time to stop merchant ships as they were coming in, uh, take a few of the uh, crew members so that the boat could still get in, but they would take them and then they would have experienced sailors for their uh, warships. And the Americans, or the colonial, colonial America, were supposed to be exempt from this. Um, but um, people were ignoring the paperwork and just taking them anyway. And um, like I say, that led through to uh, various things that it led through to. So that might be one of the reasons you might find something like uh, this sort of more American style pipe aboard a British uh, naval vessel. Also, lots of Americans, as you say, because they've been pressed, but lots of Americans were volunteering into the Navy as well. Some of them had no love of uh, France and so on. Uh, they may have had some patriotism back to the, uh, the home countries if they'd come from um, England. Uh, but they were joining the Navy as well. Indeed, HMS Victory, at the time of Battle of Trafalgar, um, about one in ten of the men aboard weren't British-born. Um, and there were a good number, I can't remember how many of them, but a good number of Americans um, aboard that vessel. So you would, you would see a lot of this cross-culture going on. Like I say, which is why I have this pipe. So the reason it's a bit more likely to be more of an American style than a British style, British styles have the bowl made from white clay and then normally have the stem as well made from the white clay, whereas this reed is a little bit more typical of the um, States. It's got some good things, um, I'm because it's socketed, you can take it out, and then if you can get into the rum magazine or if you can get hold of the uh, rum barrels before they get given out for the tot, what you can do is you can lift the knot out of the uh, side of the barrel or the lid of the barrel, and you can insert this as a straw, take a few um, slurps, a few good glugs as a drink, take it out, put the knot back, in, uh, knot back in, and then hopefully no one's any the wiser. So that's kind of cool. Um, as long as you didn't go lighting up straight away and explode the rum magazine, which 
possibly happened once. A run magazine caught fire and the ship was destroyed as the main magazines were caught. But I've, I've, I've heard the story, I anecdotally found it, but I haven't found the actual evidence of uh, which vessel it was supposed to be, supposedly in the Solent, um, that that happened. So that's one of the reasons that I decided to buy an American style pipe, because it, it opens it up to a whole raft of conversations and so on with members of the public. Um, there. The tobacco of the time came in this card form. Now, these are getting a bit ropey now. But originally, they're about the size of a credit card. Or thereabouts, here we go. About that sort of size with the missing bits filled in. And that would, believe it or not, all get crushed down and fit inside that bowl. And you can have a good old smoke. And back in the day, millions of clay pipes were made just from one factory up the road from me in Fairham. Um, millions were made because they often came pre-packed with tobacco and you'd smoke them and then ditch them much like you would say a cigarette today. Indeed, it's very difficult to go digging in Britain in the soil uh, and not come across pipe stems and pipe bowls. In fact, I'm just doing some work on my garden during this quarantine that we're under, uh, or this lockdown that we're under, and I've found a couple of pipe stems already just just in the topsoil. My house was built, or this, this building set was built in 1894, so we're just running out of those clay pipes, but I don't know what the land was used for. There's certainly lots of broken bowls and bits and pieces like that. So the men aboard, they, they, they could enjoy a smoke, but only at certain times. So if you um, were to strike up a, a smoke any old time during the day, you could find yourself up on a charge, walking around with um, lit, um, pipes and so on in amongst all that gunpowder, explosives and shot is probably not a great idea because when one of these ships exploded it was catastrophic. So if you knew the people in charge of the galley where they're doing the cooking you could go along and enjoy a smoke in the morning if you had the free time to be able to do that because the fire's lit in the galley in the morning when the food is cooked for the day. So they had fires there, so the fire risk is on, everyone's aware of it, and you can go and have a smoke. And if you were friendly with the blacksmith who bought the ships as well, it always seems strange they had a working forge on these um, vessels. It seems odd to me that, but um, just for the fact that you've got a forge on a wooden ship, but it was essential to the running of the vessel. So if you were friendly with the blacksmith, you could go and enjoy a crafty smoke in there as well. And there are plenty of nooks and crannies where I'm sure these guys went and had a smoke against regulations. Um, but if they were caught, they could be in steep trouble um, pretty quickly. So there you go, a few little things based around my American-style pipe uh, that I have for my reenactment stuff. I'll probably see if I can find something a little more armour-related tomorrow. Um, from the few bits and pieces I have skulking around the house, I'm sure we can rustle something together. So I hope you enjoyed this uh, little conversation about the pipe and my hobby and uh, the few pictures of the gun deck, if I can find any to put up. And I'll uh, see you tomorrow.